What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick one, I'll be showing you how to optimize Ready or Not now that it's fully released for the best possible performance while still keeping the game looking as good as possible. This video is not going to cover a Windows optimization at all. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find dedicated guides for Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA. This video is specifically going to focus on the in-game options, so that's where we'll start. When you boot the game, you'll get two options, DirectX 12 and 11. 11 should give you better performance, but it may differ on your system, especially if you're running something super high end. For now, I'll play on DirectX 11. When we get in-game, simply head across to Options in the bottom left here, and we'll see a huge number of options here. Then head across to Graphics at the very top, and we'll be playing around with these. On the basic tab, we'll have a few options to pick from. Graphics preset, you can set based on what kind of system you have and either work your way down or up. It doesn't really matter. Screen mode should definitely be set to full screen for the best performance and resolution should match your display. If you're playing at 4K, choose 4K, 2K, 2K, etc. Resolution scale should be set to 100%. Interface aspect ratio should be set to fill. Unless you're playing on maybe an ultra wide and you'd like everything closer to the center, in which case, choose 16 by 9. Field of view is your preference. While more field of view does technically mean lower FPS, it really is just up to you and what you prefer. ADS zoom is a toggle and your preference once again, but if you find that you're getting weird frame stutters when your field of view changes, this is an option you can come back to disable. Finally, night vision goggle screen effect allows you to change how the game looks using night vision. This is your preference though. We'll apply settings in the bottom right and head across to the advanced graphics options tab. Here there's tons of stuff. Starting at the very top, texture quality. You have a few settings here to choose from, but it really depends on how much VRAM your graphics card has. If you have around two gigs of VRAM, choose low, four gigs, choose medium, six gigs, choose high, and anything above, choose epic. Shadow quality, set this to medium to keep things looking still pretty good. Otherwise, if you set this to low, shadows all but disappear, making everything look really weird. Post-processing quality, if you find that you're losing frames when things are happening, set this down to low. And anti-aliasing quality, if you don't mind aliased corners and edges, which is that weird pixelation around edges and corners, this is an option you can lower for a good performance increase. VFX quality has to do with motion blur, depth of field, etc. Set this to medium and pretty much forget about it. View distance, I'd recommend leaving on epic, if not high, as it helps you get a better grasp of what's going on. Frame limit, set this to disabled unless you're recording your screen or YouTube videos and things like that are lagging. If so, cap your frame rate to slightly below what you're getting. For example, if you're getting 85 FPS, set this to around 80 or even 75. So there's a bit of power left on your system for other programs running in the background. If you're really not phased about limiting your frames for heat or other programs, you can just disable this for the best input latency. Motion blur is your preference. Having this enabled will cost you a few frames and make it more difficult to see what's going on. So if you insist on having it enabled, have it set to the lower end of the scale here. Otherwise, disable this for more consistent feeling gameplay with better visuals when it comes to spotting things they are not so blurry. And of course, leave this disabled if you're someone who struggles with motion sickness. Then vSync, leave this disabled unless you're getting screen tearing. And finally, bounce lighting. As far as I understand, this has to do with ambient occlusion type effects, objects cast light onto other objects. Having this enabled will make the game feel a lot better, but it can come with a performance hit on some systems. For me, I'll leave it enabled as this is a more slow paced game, or at least it should really be. And it matters more about how things look and the overall feel than a competitive shooter like Call of Duty. World decals is definitely something you should leave enabled for a much more lifelike feeling game. And decal fade distance, you can leave where it is at 99% or 100%. You can, however, lower this if you find that you're very CPU limited to begin with, as in your CPU is pinned to 100%, your graphics card isn't doing too much, that's where everything's going to be processed like that. I'll leave it at where it was at 99% or 100. Opti wand options have to do with the wand that you use to peek under doors and things like that. You can limit frames for the display here and even change the resolution if you find that when you pull it out, you're losing tons of performance. Then scrolling down further, AMD FSR 2 and DLSS. This is where you'll get a huge boost in performance, pretty much no matter what else your other options are set to. I'd recommend using either FSR 2 or DLSS on the quality option. You can choose one or the other, but not both. If you have an Nvidia graphics card, you can try DLSS, set this to quality and see how the game looks and feels. Otherwise, try 
FSR2 at quality and see how it looks and feels. If you don't have an Nvidia graphics card, you don't really have much choice here. Essentially, the more to the performance side you push this, the lower the resolution your game will be, as in it runs in a smaller window, but AI magic is used to upscale it and make it look as good as full screen normal native quality. However, the more that AI has to work to upscale your image, the more weird artifacts and glitches you'll start to notice, especially when turning around quickly. That's why we usually start at quality and only work our way down if we really need that extra performance. Quality is great and I'd recommend always playing here. Otherwise, balanced is a good compromise if you need more frames. Anything below this does really get into the territory of seeing weird artifacts and glitches. So anyways, quality is a good place to start. Finally, in Video Reflex, if you have an Nvidia graphics card, you should have this enabled. If you open up Task Manager and your CPU is pinned to 100% while you're playing the game, your CPU limited and should set this to enabled plus boost. Otherwise, if things are pretty balanced, leave this at enabled. At the very bottom, we have three options, game to render, game and render latency. All of these options here essentially enable a latency counter in the top left of your screen. Game latency is the game handling, mouse inputs and things like that. And render latency is the amount of time it takes for the game to send information to your graphics card, your graphics card to process it and to show it on your screen. You can enable all three of these to get more detailed information of what exactly is slowing you down. I'll enable all three of these and hop into the game to see how things feel and look. Though already before we even get there, you can notice some crazy aliased edges on helmets and things like that. If this is way too distracting for you and you're happy to give up a few FPS, head back into options and on the graphics tab, set your anti-aliasing to at least medium for a small improvement, though it just really blows it, high for a much higher quality anti-alias or epic for looking pretty much the same as high, but a small FPS hit. High is what I'd choose here. Otherwise, if you're really clawing for FPS, you'll definitely be setting this option down to low. All right, so popping into the first game, there's lots of lighting and of course, lots of ways that we can test our FPS. Our FPS here is actually surprisingly higher than the training at a solid 150. Things look great and they feel great. If we pause the game, options, we can adjust our graphics options here, advanced graphics, to get better control over our system. But for now, this is actually good. If we instead crank everything back up to the max, which it was by default, and look at how things feel, there's not that much that has changed, except for our FPS dropping a little bit. Most of that extra performance comes from DLSS or FSR. So if we disable this, you'll instead see how the game renders at native resolution. And to be honest, it's still pretty good. 130. This game is very well optimized for what it is, and you really shouldn't have an issue playing it on your system. If you do, once again, medium, low, probably high, followed by medium and high is probably where you'll be sitting for the most part. Anyways, oh, hey, actually 160. It looks great. It feels great. It's actually surprisingly well optimized. Why exactly didn't we choose DirectX 12? Well, it's unstable on some systems. It may perform well for you, give you better performance even, but today versus tomorrow, you could have really bad stuttering or things like that. It's more unpredictable than the more tried and tested DirectX 11. But let's give it a shot anyways. We'll head back. There we go. We're back in game and we're setting at a solid 215 FPS on my system. There we go. We're back in game. DirectX 12 was sitting at a solid 215, which is a big improvement actually. It feels good. It plays good. But obviously this isn't going to be for everyone. I'd recommend you optimize your settings, keep those settings and change from 11 to DirectX 12. See if you get a performance increase, if stuttering increases, etc. Usually on newer, higher end systems, DirectX 12 will work magic for your computer. If you find stuttering increases and things like that, it's definitely something you'll want to turn off and instead use DirectX 11. For example, walking around here, there's pretty bad stuttering actually, even though our frame rate is really high. Although being here for a little bit, I think it was probably just loading everything in. The frame rate dropping and weird hitches seems to actually have disappeared. Oh no, there's a bit more moving into the area. Yeah, that's that's very bad actually. But instead, let's try DirectX 11 and there you have it. From 200 to 150-ish approaching the gas station here, you should see frames are much more stable. Obviously, there's trade-offs to using 11 versus 12 and it'll perform differently on your system than mine, but just purely based off of the graph in the top left, there's way fewer hitches and stuttering. You'll need to do some testing yourself and whichever one works better for you is what you'll be sticking around with. But anyways, that's 
really it for this quick optimization guide. So hopefully you found it useful. Thank you all for watching. My name has been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao. By the way, a huge thank you to my first ultimate supporter, KZ.